Welcome. This is what is happening on the Sun today, the 9th of August 2011. Solar activity has picked up quite spectacularly. Since yesterday we've had three C flares, two of which have been quite large, two M flares, an M3 and an M2, and an X flare, an X7 flare, which is the largest flare of Solar Cycle 24 so far. However, today's trivia question has nothing to do with flares. Willie Fowler was born 100 years ago today. He won the Nobel Prize for Physics. What important theory was he in part responsible for? I'll even give you a clue. B squared FH. The answer, of course, will be given at the end. Here's the NOAA GOES X-ray plot showing the activity that I've just talked about. You can see how the activity is built in the last 24 hours. And the X-flare is still underway as I put this video together. Here's a more detailed view of the X-flare using the 1 minute data rather than the 5 minute data that I normally show. This is only the third X flare of Solar Cycle 24 and by far the largest. First let's take a look at the M flares. I assume most of you have seen the video that I made last night with the breaking news on the M3 flare. So we'll go first to the M2 flare that occurred at 0320 UT today. So I'll show a sequence of four movies in order of increasing temperature. First the Helium-2304 at about 50,000 degrees then the uh, low temperature corona at about uh, 600,000 degrees, then the active region corona at about 2 million degrees, and lastly the flare corona at about 10 million degrees. And I'll just let these play uninterrupted so you can enjoy the view. Both flares came from the same region, region 1263. So now let's do exactly the same thing but with the X flare that started at about 0800. So let's take a quick look at the active regions on the disk. We still have only three officially numbered regions. 1263, which has been giving us all the activity, is right near the west limb and will be going over in the next day or two. Region 1268 has shown significant signs of growth and may be our next region for producing major flaring, if that growth continues. Region 1267 has uh, decayed quite significantly and there are three other unnumbered regions at the moment all of which comprise tiny groups of small spots. From the SOHO coronagraph data we can see that there's been almost a continuous outflow of coronal mass ejections from the southwest. In the middle of the movie you can see the uh, coronal mass ejection off of the north limb that we talked about yesterday. 
However, the coronal mass ejections associated with the M flare and the X flare seem to be very, very rapid, over a thousand kilometers per second. Some estimates put it as high as 3,000 kilometers per second, which is quite remarkable. Meanwhile, the temperature and density of the solar wind has remained relatively constant. However, due to the presence of a small coronal hole and the high-speed solar wind stream associated with it, the velocity of the solar wind has been easing up over the last 24 hours. The high energy electron flux seems to remain relatively high for the last 24 hours. And in the proton flux you can see the decay of the previous event, plus the effect of one of the M flares, and now we're beginning to get the protons from the uh, X flare. The NOAA satellite shows us that the uh, auroral zone is moderately active, but the uh, KP index is relatively quiet. In summary then, the X-ray background is at the B4 level, the sunspot number has dropped to 80, the radio sun intensity is at 102 solar flux units. Solar wind speed is similar to yesterday at 570 km per second with a density of less than one proton per cubic centimeter and geospace conditions are considered quiet. So my forecast for the next 24 hours is that we still have a very good chance of getting C flares. There's a good chance of getting M flares and X flares are possible. The sunspot number should drift lower. We've got a good chance of getting coronal mass ejections. The solar wind speed should ease lower and the chances of getting a major geomagnetic storm in the next 24 hours is low. In the slightly longer term, the composite coronal image shows that there are no new regions due to rotate over the East Limit for the next few days. I'm sure that the hint to the trivia question was every bit as obscure as the trivia question itself. The B squared FH stands for Burbage, Burbage, Fowler and Hoyle, who were co-authors of the first paper to describe nucleosynthesis in stars which is the process by which stars create heavier elements out of lighter ones and make things like you, me and the planet. Okay, well that's it for today. Keep safe. Bye for now.